Over the last three years, we have given you literally hundreds of maintenance tips, but never before have we put in one place all the things that you shouldn't do. Until now, that is, because here are the top 10 maintenance mistakes. The first mistake regards lubricant, but not the way you're thinking. Now, many people either don't put enough lube on, or they put too much on, or they lubricate an already dirty chain. So the first point is that you should clean your drivetrain regularly, particularly if you ride in poor conditions. Secondly, you need to make sure that every link on the chain has a coating of lubricant when you put it on, and then let it sink in for a minute or so before wiping off any excess. Now, this might sound counterintuitive, but stick with me. You see, the lubricant would have already sunk in to the most important points of the chain, the rollers, and then when you wipe off the excess, you wipe it off the outside, where the lubricant would serve no purpose other than to attract dirt and grime, which is exactly what you don't want. Now, something many of us will have experienced already is the feeling of putting in a new inner tube only to realise you haven't checked the inside of the tyre for whatever caused the puncture in the first place, and then suffering another puncture just a couple of minutes later. So if you don't want to feel deflated, literally, then make sure you always check the inside of the tyre with your hand very carefully and then inspecting the outside of the tyre for that object. Over tightening bolts on your bike is potentially very easy to do, particularly when using tools that provide a lot of leverage. But it's also potentially very costly as you might strip bolts or even break components. And then potentially it's very dangerous as the worst case scenario is that the components break when you're actually out riding. So you should always use a torque meter when you're tightening bolts on your bike and always torque them up to 10% below the maximum recommended torque as specified by the manufacturers. For the sake of your mind, and also your body. And your wallet as well, I suppose. It's quite natural when you're getting into road cycling to pump your tyres up to be rock solid, so like 120 PSI or above, because that's super fast, right? Well, unless your local roads are billiard board smooth, in which case 120 PSI may well actually be the fastest, you'd be better off putting about 90 to 100 PSI in your tyres. Although you may need to adjust it if you are particularly light or particularly heavy. But that way you'll get a much more comfortable ride and a faster ride. The limit screws on your front and rear derailers do a really important job by literally limiting how far the derailleur can actually move. Now, if you have them set up incorrectly, you'll find that the chain often comes off when you shift with your front derailleur, or that it gets wedged between your cassette and your frame, or worst of all, that it gets wedged between the cassette and your spokes, which is potentially really costly. Now, actually getting them set up correctly is a straightforward process. We've got a video dealing with each one, your front derailleur and your rear derailleur, and the links to which are in the description below this video. It is a job you should not put off and don't make that mistake. We know good tools can be really expensive, but they're also an excellent investment because using old worn out Allen keys can lead to rounding off bolts, which potentially will mean that you have to have an expensive repair as your local bike shop drills out the bolt and then replaces it. So buy a good quality set of Allen keys at least and then add to your tool collection when you need it and crucially when you can afford it. Loose headsets is something that we see all the time on other people's bikes. And it's kind of weird really, because it's such an easy thing to fix. All you gotta do is loosen the stem bolts and then tighten the top cap very gently until the bike stops knocking when you put the front brake on and rock it back and forth. Then you make sure the stem is straight, tighten the stem bolts up again using your torque wrench, and there you go, job done. Your bike will now feel and sound a heck of a lot better. A couple of years ago, Dan made a video about how to remove a seized seat post. And it wasn't an easy job, and even with his guns, a professional workshop, and a heck of a lot of help. So make sure it doesn't happen to you. It's a really simple thing to prevent. Every three months or so, simply mark the height of your seat post, remove it, clean it, and then apply some kind of product. If it's a metal post in a metal frame, it'll need grease. And if either the frame or the post is carbon, then it'll need fiber grip. Then replace it and that's it, job done. You will not get a seized seat post. Now this is something that I haven't fully got a grip of, even though I've been working on bikes for many years and have had many painful pedal removals. I mean, it's an easy thing to do. Your pedal is on extremely tightly for some reason, so all of your strength and concentration is going into pressing down on the spanner or the Allen key. 
If that's the case, just make sure that your hand is not going to slip into the chain rings because it is extremely painful. Instead, you want to angle the crank so that when the bugger finally loosens, your hand is not going to hit anything sharp. There we go then, 10 common maintenance mistakes you should now avoid like the plague. If you want to see a video though on our top 10 cycling mistakes, then if you click just up there, you get through to that video. Or as I mentioned earlier, we have hundreds of tips about maintenance here on GCN and all of our Maintenance Monday videos are in one handy place. You get through to it just down there. Before you go to either though, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. It's free to do, all you've got to do is click on me.